It's another week here on the Commander's Report, which means yet another Q&A uh, from me, uh, host of the Commander's Report, Jack Sperry here. Can't wait to answer your questions on the Burgundy and Gold. It's been another interesting week uh, here uh, for the Washington Commanders. So get down there right now. Uh, get your questions in. Hashtag Commanders if you're watching this live. But if you're not watching this live and you're watching this during the weekend, then you missed the live show. But don't fret. You guys can get your question on next week's Commander's Report live show by clicking that subscribe button right now and joining us every Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we uh, break down your questions and we also uh, have some hijinks. We do these super chat promotions, tortilla slaps, uh, nasty jelly beans, all these different stuff. So if you want the most interactive Commanders fan community on YouTube and to have a voice uh, here with our awesome Commanders community, make sure you click that subscribe button right now. And with that, I'll pause and open it up for questions, starting with my man, Jonathan Taylor. It says, chance to trade Allen for LT, will they do it? For, for, for a left tackle? Uh, I mean, it depends on the left tackle, right? Because if it's Dan Moore Jr., there's no way in hell I'm trading Jonathan Allen for him. Uh, Dan Moore is like, you know, he's like a low-level starter. Jonathan Allen is a really good starting defensive tackle. So, like, it depends on the left tackle. But there's just not a whole lot of left tackles that are available via trade. It's just not the way that it works. If you have one, you're not getting rid of them because that's a very valuable position. Uh... And very few teams have multiple offensive tackles on their roster, uh, three of them, that can start in the National Football League. And even if you, they do have three, they tend to keep those guys because what if one of those guys gets hurt, right? So it's just very difficult to find teams willing to trade tackles, starting capable tackles, uh, especially at this point in the offseason. But if the chance presents itself and it's a good enough tackle, I'm certainly open to it. Then we got one from Omar's Burner and says, is there a possibility of a wide receiver trade this offseason for the Commanders? It's possible. I won't say it's likely because I think that they like the receivers they have in their building. You have your true number one in Terry McLaurin. You've got a nice secondary piece in Jahan Dotson. I think they like uh, Deami Brown and Mitchell Tinsley and Dax Milne and all these backup level guys that they have. And then Luke McCaffrey was their pick in round three this year. Bigger body, really strong. Uh, and I think they really believe in him as well. So I, I, I really do like this wide receiver room for the commanders. I think they could, I mean, if they had an opportunity to add like a DK Metcalf or Cortland Sutton, I might do it. Uh, uh, but yeah, man, it's just, it's just going to be interesting for sure. All right. So JG says, is Coker from Holy Cross still available as an undrafted free agent? I'm going to look this up right now. I'm actually not sure because if you guys remember, Jalen Coker was one of my uh, sleepers this year. Um, so he, he signed with the Panthers as an undrafted free agent. So, so the commanders can't get him. He's with the Panthers. And honestly, the, with the Panthers and their current wide receiver position, I think he's going to make the roster there. Uh, he might be a surprise player this year as an undrafted free agent. That's a pretty good contributor for them. So wishing Coker the best of luck. But in terms of the commanders, uh, yeah, that ship has sailed. Then we got one from Mr. Washington. And he says, how would you feel about trading for DK Metcalf? What do you think it would cost? I think it would probably cost two second-round picks. Um, you know, he's their number one receiver there in Seattle right now. I know they have Jackson Smith and Jigba and Tyler Lockett, both of which are good players as well. But DK is their number one guy. He's their number one deep threat. Uh, he's big. He's only 26 years old. Uh, so he's somebody that, you know, is a young star at the wide receiver position in this league. Um you know, I, I don't think the commanders are going to give up a first round pick in future years for anyone, but would they be willing to give up two seconds in consecutive years? Maybe if it means they can get a guy like DK Metcalf. Um, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they do here. If that pr opportunity presented itself, uh, what it would look like for the Washington commanders. So make the call for me down there in the comment section. If you are Adam Peters and the Seattle Seahawks offer DK Metcalf to you, in exchange for your next two second round draft picks. Would you take it? Type Y for yes or N for no. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time. But give me a yes or no down there in the comments. Then we on from Nate Dog 9 And he says, will Jonathan Allen and fifth round pick be traded for Tristan Wirfs? Um, I don't... I just don't understand why Tampa would want to get rid of Wirfs. I mean, unless they're... Because... Listen, man, Tampa Bay is a team that I, I think that they're trying to run it back with their guys that won a playoff game last year, right? Baker, Mike Evans they brought back this year. They haven't traded Chris Godwin, who's on the last year of his contract. Um, and obviously, Tristan Wirfs is a big part 
of their offensive line. So listen, Jonathan Allen is 29 years old. He's aging. He's a good player, but he's an aging good player. And then a fifth-round pick is pretty much nothing, right? It's a day-three pick. And Tristan Wirfs is one of the best tackles in football. Like, that's just a pretty lopsided deal. Uh, and I just don't think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would really uh, want that. Now, if it's Jonathan Allen and, like, a second-round pick or even a first-round pick, yeah, they're gonna, they might think about it a little bit. Uh, but usually if you have a good offensive tackle, left tackle in this league, you, you don't let them go. Um, that's what the Bucks have right now, so I'm not sure if they're even willing to entertain it. Then we go on from Deborah Anderson. What's up, Deborah? Says, I'm just hoping uh, that we have a solid team this year. You and me both, Deborah. Uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that after last year, with how bad it was, offensively and defensively, I always knew that the offense could have been a disaster last year because the offensive line was so bad and Sam Howell was unproven. I always knew it was a possibility the offense was going to be bad, but uh, the defense really disappointed me last year, man. Uh, with the amount of talent they had on the defensive line to start the year, uh, you know, I really liked the safeties. Uh, Emmanuel Forbes, I was relatively high on heading into the year, and he disappointed. Uh, so it was a very disappointing season last year, and you can go back to however many seasons you want. This has been a disappointing football team, but hopefully with the new owner, with the new GM and Adam Peters, new head coach in Dan Quinn, and the new quarterback, Jaden Daniels, uh, things are starting to look up here, and I'm very excited about the future of this football team. Now, before I get into the rest of your questions today, go to chatsports.com slash Daniels to get an officially licensed Jaden Daniels Commander's jersey in your closet today. Just so you guys know, it might not be number one. You know, it's probably going to be number five. You know, they haven't announced the official number at the time that I'm recording this video here. But uh, Jaden Daniels is somebody uh, that I think is going to be a mainstay here with the Washington Commanders for the next decade plus. I think he's going to be a star quarterback for this football team. If you agree with me, you want to make an investment in his jersey before they sell out, go to chatsports.com slash Daniels to get your official Jaden Daniels jersey in your closet today. And we got another one from JG here. It says, did you see the quarterback ranking that came out today that had JD ranked 34th out of 36? I did not. Um, I wonder who's above him. I did see a CBS Sports one earlier this week that had like JJ McCarthy like 25th already uh, over guys like Russell Wilson and like, le like legit starters that are established in the league, right? And it's just ridiculous. Um, so J Jane Daniels, I think, is going to be one of the better rookie quarterbacks this year. I think J.J. McCarthy probably won't get on the field till about midseason. I think Caleb will be really good with the Bears. Uh, Drake May, if he plays, I don't think he'll play well. He's going to be somebody that I think needs to develop a bit. Uh, Michael Penix probably won't be playing for Atlanta. So, you know, I think that J.D. has a really good chance to establish himself as a really good quarterback in this league heading into next year. Needs to protect his body better. Uh, he needs to adjust the, to the NFL's speed of the game. Uh, he needs to take advantage of his weapons, but uh, I'm, I'm very excited about his future here in this league. And make sure you guys click that thumbs up icon if you are a real one. You watch our shows, you support the channel. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to talk about Commander's Football every single day for free here on the channel. So really do appreciate all of your support. Let me on from Ron Burgundy and says, how do you feel about Austin Eckler heading into the year? Do you think he'll be run, running back one? I don't. I think B-Rob is still going to be the number one running back. Eckler is getting older. He kind of lost a step last year on film, if I'm being honest. Um, and honestly, I think that Chris Rodriguez Jr. out of Kentucky, a second-year player out of Kentucky, might be rife here for a really good breakout season. He uh, showed some good things at the end of last year. Um, and if there's an injury and he gets an opportunity to really get some quality reps, I think that he could really establish himself as a good back. In the National Football League, if Austin Eckler continues kind of his downward spiral, his decline, uh, you know, I could see Chris Rodriguez Jr. getting more and more of a role as the season progresses. Hopefully, Austin Eckler is a good third down option for you as a receiving option, as a nice run blocker, or not run blocker, pass blocker on third downs. It's kind of your scat back, but I do think Brian Robinson Jr., the younger, and at this point, I think faster running back um, is probably the better option at the number one spot. Then we got $10 Super Chat here from Indian Lake, Ohio, who says, Allen, so talking about Jonathan Allen for DK Metcalf is smart. Get a big number one wide receiver, trade a defensive tackle asset where we have plenty of talent already. Shift $20 million a year from defensive line to wide receiver, smart business. And I don't disagree with Indian Lake, Ohio here. Um, I don't think that it would be straight up like the way he presents it here. I don't think uh, they'd give up Metcalf for Allen straight up. 
I think it would be like Allen in a third round pick or Allen in a second round pick, something along those lines. Uh, but at the end of the day, Metcalf's a really good player. Now, the Commanders do have a number one receiver in Terry McLaurin, and I actually think McLaurin is better than Metcalf. So I think Metcalf would actually be the number two option here in Washington, but he is a big. He's a star wide receiver at 26 years old. Um, and if he's gettable and, you know, if Allen wants to get traded anyway, it might be smart business to make that trade uh, and move that money from defensive tackle to wide receiver. Then we go on from Bo Rat. <laughs> very, very nice. I like. Says, what is a move that you did not like from Adam Peters this offseason and why? Trading of the second round pick, the second second round pick to the Eagles, where they were able to scoop up Cooper to Gene. God, I hated that, man. Especially when you traded down and you didn't address edge rusher. I mean, edge rusher was one of my biggest needs for this team heading into the draft. They didn't draft a single one. Not one. And you got Dorrance Armstrong and, I mean, K.J. Henry or Cleveland Furl or Dante Fowler Jr., whoever wins that second edge rusher spot. It's looking like Cleveland Furl, by the way. It just, you know, it, that rubbed me the wrong way. It just did. And, you know, giving Cooper DeGene to the Eagles, who already had Quinion Mitchell in the first round, I mean, goodness gracious. It's just, it's just, it should be unforgivable what he did. And then he traded down. And listen, I like Mike Sainer still, and I like Ben Sennett, but those are two low-value positions when you had a glaring need at a very important position at edge rusher. So, like, I don't know, man. It's, that was a move that just doesn't sit right with me because I hate the Philadelphia Eagles. I hate the Dallas Cowboys. I hate uh, the New York Giants. And to give one of those guys a really good player uh, just doesn't really sit right with me personally. So is there any regrets uh, here this offseason from your perspective? Are there any moves that you wish Adam Peters hadn't have made this offseason? Well, did you, would you have rather taken Drake May instead of Jaden Daniels? Uh, did you like the Johnny Newton pick? Let me know. Down there in the comments section, is there any move that you disagree with that the Commanders made this offseason? That'll be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate everybody that submitted questions this week. Again, join us uh, and subscribe on Thursday here, uh, every single Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going live. We're taking your questions. We're having a good time. So if you want the most interactive Commanders community here on YouTube, make sure you click that subscribe button right now.